Line from Moscow we have with us Elena Chernenko. She's observer for the Commerçant newspaper. Elena, thanks for joining us. Hello. Tell us, what is your observations about the fact that German leader Angela Merkel called President Barack Obama to complain about the alleged cell phone tapping that she believes the NSA has been conducting on her phone? Give us your opinion on that. Well, it seems that uh, the European leaders, uh, Angela Merkel, one of them, they seem to be really uh, angered at um, what the U.S. seemed to be doing, uh, wiretapping their uh, personal phone calls, because uh, Germany is one of the closest allies of the U.S. Uh, one could, of course, understand that the U.S. would be uh, surveying and listening to um, countries that might be dangerous for them, countries that must, might host terrorists. Um, but not Germany, of course. Um, it's an ally, it's a member of NATO, and it makes one wonder what kind of information um, the U.S. Uh, special services, the U.S. intelligence, might want to learn from Angela Merkel's uh, personal phones uh, and her business phones, of course. Um, I think that's a, a scandal, um, and this might really harm the relations between uh, Germany and um, the U.S., uh, it's one of the most important topics for the uh, session uh, uh, of the meeting of the European Council today because the French are also uh, on board um, with Germany on that matter. Would we take a look at the extent that the National Security Agency is apparently sweeping the phone calls and numbers, especially in France? We're talking 70 million. How does this play in the French press and the German press that so many citizens their phone calls have been intercepted and monitored. It's a big scandal in Europe. It's a big scandal uh, in France as well as in Germany, and not only in those countries. Uh, the reports of uh, this uh, kind of massive surveillance have been translated into many other languages. So, for example, the Russian press is covering it very closely. Uh, everybody wants to hear some kind of a um, plausible explanation from the U.S. Uh, so far, there has been none. Uh, some uh, officials have already said that those reports are misleading. Uh, however, they did not um, specify what was incorrect. Either the numbers of the people uh, surveillance has been smaller or maybe something else. We don't know. There's not much information about it. So the question stands in the room. Um, there is lots of other questions that go by that because it's, of course, as, as I said, all governments do collect somehow information on, on other governments that they think are hostile to them. But this is something uh, among allies, and this is a scandal because of this, because they have close ties. Uh, there is a question of trust. How can you trust somebody who is um, intercepting your communication? Well, just very recently, the former French foreign minister said that people should, I'm paraphrasing here, calm down, everybody eavesdrop at everyone else. Is it that that the U.S. has so much or does so much of it, that has the power to do so much, that that's the real problem here? Well, um, I think uh, there is one discussion on state level, and sometimes um, common people have the impression that the um, representatives of states are trying to push uh, the pro problem down to not discuss it as open. But the citizens are, of course, uh, aware uh, of all of these reports, and they would like to have more information, more uh, answers to know what is going on. Um, for example, whenever the first time the information came about from Snowden's files that the U.S. Um, is collecting information on Europe, um, Angela Merkel was one of the leaders who has been very carefully uh, commenting on this. She said that uh, she has heard uh, these reports, but she would like to have some explanations from Barack Obama. She met with him, and she seemed to be satisfied with that kind of explanation that she got at that time. Now um, there is more uh, information, it's more scandalous, and it's not going to be easy to just uh, do business as usual uh, to pretend like nothing happened. Well, there's obviously some understanding at the government level, the highest levels, that all governments spy on each other. Is that pretty much understood at that level, that nations do it? It just shouldn't be publicized. And, of course, this was publicized by the Edward Snowden leaks. Well, of course, um, there is some kind of understanding that um, there are spying programs um, that not only the U.S. is doing, many other countries do that. They, have, they are advancing uh, their progr pro programs like that. But... Um, 
the scale of it uh, shown by uh, the files that Snowden revealed is surprising to even experts. Uh, for example, I've been reporting on Internet and surveillance for uh, quite a long time, but um, if you know something and you expect something, it's one thing. But if you have actual documents uh, that show you the scale of uh, that kind of surveillance, that's amazing. And um, look, there is not only complaints from the closest allies of the U.S. Um, in NATO. There's also a lot of anger in, for example, Brazil and Mexico. Uh, for example, last month's Brazilian president, Dilma Rousseff, made a very, very angry speech at the um, opening of the UN General Assembly, uh, cybersecurity and surveillance was one of her main topics. She even canceled a state visit to Washington after these revelations. So, yes, uh, everybody knows that there is uh, spying going around, that everybody spies on other countries, but the scale of it makes uh, a point where uh, the, the scandal comes about. Well, as a journalist, and you've covered the issue of uh, surveillance and uh, the Internet, the, the fact that all of us use cell phones, all of our electronic data is actually out there, quite frankly, for anyone to steal, whether it's the government or criminals. Is there anything in your experience that you can tell us where a person can better protect themselves or, in this case, how nations can protect themselves from this kind of surveillance? It makes my one really paranoid once you learn that everybody can intercept everything that you do. Um, there's not really much that you can um, try to do to perfectly protect us, yourself from that kind of surveillance. There is uh, some advice from experts, for example, they would say uh, just um, logical things like don't ever write uh, um, things in SMS or in your social networks that you would not like to be published the next day on the front page of some magazine. Uh, try to use uh, really difficult passwords. Uh, try to use uh, proxies like Tor and other ones. Um, so there is uh, lots of advice. You can find it on the Internet. But it seems uh, with those capacities that, for example, the National Security Agency has, uh, and Snowden showed much of it, that it's not really uh, possible to protect oneself uh, 100%. For example, if even Angela Merkel uh, has not seemed able to be protecting her uh, communications, then what can a normal citizen from another country do? So what's the end result of all this, this constant surveillance, uh, government surveilling other governments, uh, in this case the U.S.? As you know, there's been scandals where spies have been caught in each other's countries, those of allies. Where does this go from here? Well, um, I am um, really happy that these uh, revelations of Snowden, that they're not... Um, that they're leading actually to some kind of a discussion because at the beginning when uh, his revelations about uh, the massive surveillance came out, uh, there was some discussion, but then it calmed down for, um, in about August or September. Now it's coming up again, and it's coming up on uh, the highest level in different countries, in Europe as well as in, on other continents. And um, a massive discussion is now taking place. Um, citizens are asking uh, their states um, to bring this up, uh, to do something about privacy on the Internet, human rights on the Internet, I think it's very important because, uh, for example, uh, the ex-Secretary um, of State, Hillary Clinton, uh, she made several speeches about Internet freedom and human rights on the Internet. Well, privacy is one of the rights of the citizens. And I think it's very important that this, that this discussion is not dying down, it's getting stronger, and it might lead to some results, maybe to some kind of an agreement on more protection uh, of common citizens on the Internet. For example, Russia was trying to introduce a kind of new international uh, treaty at the UN that was two years ago. Um, this treaty was criticized very much um, because it introduced some kind of rules of play, some kinds of rules of behavior in the Internet, not only for common citizens and even not as much for common citizens. It was more about states, what states could and should not do on the internet uh, harming others' interests. So massive surveillance would be one of those things that states need uh, to talk about on state level and to agree on some kind of basic rules that uh, something would be regulated here. Well, uh, Elena, this is certainly a story that will continue to develop and hopefully we'll talk to you again about uh, the issue of uh, surveillance, whether it's uh, national or governmental or international. We've been talking with Elena Chernenko. She's an observer for the Commerçant newspaper in Moscow.